The ARC's model of motivation was developed in response to a desire to find more effective ways of understanding the major influences on motivation to learn and for systematic ways of identifying and solving problems with learning motivation. The ARC's model was created by Dr. John M. Keller. After graduating from high school in 1956, John Keller briefly attended college before joining the Marines in 1957. After his military service, he enrolled in college and graduated from the University of California, Riverside with a bachelor's degree in philosophy with a minor in English in 1965. He taught high school in California for six years before completing his Ph.D. in instructional systems technology at Indiana University in 1974. After receiving his Ph.D., he became an assistant professor in instructional technology at Syracuse University. While there, he consulted for a variety of business, educational, and government clients on learning and instructional issues and began developing his ideas on motivation in learning situations, which led to his development of the ARC's model of motivational design in 1979. In 1985, he accepted a position at Florida State University as Associate Professor of Instructional Science and Technology. He became a full professor in 1988 and continues his work on the ARC's model. He has provided consulting services to many businesses, including IBM, Citibank, Samsung, as well as the Florida Department of Education. Throughout his career, he has continued to focus on research, theory, and practice in the area of motivation. He has written many refereed journal articles, book chapters, and published four books, including Motivational Design for Learning and Performance, The ARC's Model Approach. Currently, he is a professor emeritus at Florida State University in the Educational Psychology and Learning Systems Department. The ARCS model is a method for improving the motivational appeal of instructional materials. It has three distinct features, a set of conceptual categories that characterize human motiv motivation, attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. Each category includes sets of strategies to use to enhance the motivation of instruction. And thirdly, it incorporates a systematic design process called motivational design. Attention strategies arouse and sustain curiosity and interest. As part of this strategy, instructors should Instructors should ask themselves, what can I do to capture a learner's interest? However, getting attention is not enough. The real challenge is to sustain it. The goal is to find a balance between boredom and indifference and hyperactivity and anxiety. The relevant strategies link learners' needs, interests, and motives once the learner's attention has been obtained. How many times have you been asked by a student, why do I have to do this? Instructors should present the objectives and purpose of instruction to meet a learner's experiences. Instructors and course designers need to make the, make the instruction relevant to a student's future career opportunities. Confidence strategies help students develop a positive expectation of achievement. In this strategy, teachers inform students about performance requirements and assessment criteria. Students are provided with challenging and meaningful opportunities to be successful and the teacher provides meaningful feedback before any projects are turned in. Finally, satisfaction strategies provide extrinsic and intrinsic reinforcement for, for effort. The confidence students felt during the previous strategy influences satisfaction. If the learner feels good about the consequences and efforts they put forth, they will continue to be motivated towards learning. To make instruction appealing is the goal of motivational design. Keller states that the ARC's motivational model is a systematic design process called motivational design that can be used effectively with traditional instructional design methods. While there are a variety of ID models that have been generated since the 1970s, practically all ID models contain the core elements of ADI, which is an acronym for Analysis, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate. I will use this model to demonstrate how the ARC's motivational model can be integrated 
with an instructional design model. The ARCS phases in instructional design are define, design, develop, and evaluate. When integrating the ARCS motivational design model with ADDI, analysis will happen in the define phase of motivational design, where instructional designers will classify a motivational problem to be solved. If the problem is one of improving motivational appeal of instruction, then it is appropriate to use the model by analyzing the audience for motivational gaps. After this is done, the instructional designer should prepare motivational objectives. By creating specific motivational objectives, the designer or instructor is better able to choose appropriate motivational strategies. When you move to the design phase of ADDIE, you also move to the design phase of the ARCS model where you create a potential list of motivational strategies for each objective. After reviewing the potential strategies, select the ones you want to use. Strategies should not take up too much instructional time nor detract from the instructional objectives. They should fall within the time and money constraints of the development and implementation aspects of the instruction, be acceptable to the audience, and be compatible with the delivery system, including the in instructor's personal style and preferences. At the development stage of ADDI, you also move to the develop stage of the ARCS model, which also includes the implement stage of ADDI where you prepare any motivational materials that are required and integrate them into your instruction. This usually requires revision of the instructional materials to ensure internal consistency. Moving into the evaluation stage of ADDI also moves you to the evaluation stage of the ARCS model, where you conduct a developmental tryout or a pilot and you assess your motivational outcomes. It is important to base the evaluation of the materials on motivational as well as learning outcomes. To judge motivational consequences, it is best to use direct measures of learner persistence, intensity of effort, emotion, and attitude. The ARCS model of motivational design is an easy to apply approach to increasing the motivational appeal of instruction. ARCS provides a useful framework for both the design and improvement of the motivational quality in the classroom, and it doesn't matter which instructional design method you choose. Thank you for watching.